before I get to today's extra long double length special, please do me a big favor and consider liking and subscribing and ringing the bell so that mommy knows how much you missed her. Welcome back to another episode of Olive TV. I'm Olive and this is your TV. Today's video will be two-ish matches from my time at USTA League Nationals in Scottsdale, Arizona. This was my first time playing in a USTA League postseason and my second year of USTA ever. My team represented the NorCal section in the 5-0 women's 18 and over division. Shout out to team captains Deb and Jen and also thanks to Johnny who helped me get in contact with them last year. Thank you all for helping me get my tennis career restarted. Also, shout out to the rest of the team. I love you all and it's been so fun playing together. So the matches you're about to see, I am both really excited to show you and not excited to show you. In some ways, these matches really suck because I was suffering from pneumonitis, AKA my lungs were inflamed from the Arizona dust and dryness and I was having trouble breathing. So my play was compromised as in I had very little stamina and I had to manage and almost ration my movement. And overall, the discomfort was just really distracting and negatively affected my energy and my ability to focus during play. But in other ways, these matches are freaking amazing because they were a huge learning experience in multiple ways. At the time of publishing this video, I'm in the middle of a big breakthrough in my tennis game that was triggered by my experiences in Arizona. I would describe the breakthrough as a synthesis of physical and mental stuff. So my now updated slightly more modern strokes make it much easier to hit a variety of balls at different heights, depths, and especially shorter angles. And at the same time, mentally, I feel like I'm experiencing the game with much less anxiety. Time during points is much slower than how I used to experience it. In Arizona, I was playing against and watching girls play who, like no shade, aren't as athletic as I am. And I was watching them play at a high level with the tools that they have available to them. And at the same time, I was trying to compensate for the physical limitations from my breathing. So experiencing these two things together for three days in a row made it dawn on me really slowly that I've always played tennis in a constant mode of anxiety. Not necessarily like an explicit, like, oh, something's wrong anxiety all the time, but there are these bursts of panic that overcome me when I'm making decisions in the middle of points. And even when I'm like in the process of hitting a ball, even if I feel calm and cool and rational before the match on changeovers and even between points and even between shots during rallies, the panic spikes on every single decision during every single shot, basically. The stronger my opponent is, usually the harder or faster I succumb to the anxiety and make poor decisions or just shank or whiff on balls. In clutch situations or if I'm up big during a match, I'll also experience that panic more strongly. Yeah, and it makes me miss. It makes me make bad decisions and makes me miss. It makes me overhit the ball. It makes me hit the ball into the bottom of the net. I miss wide or I aim for too good of a shot um, and I tense up. Something about my experience in Scottsdale and possibly the match that I played at the KPSF Open the week before I went to Scottsdale, something about these experiences helped me become more conscious of my internal experience when I play tennis matches. I became aware that the panic existed, that I was tensing up and becoming aware helped me start the process of overcoming it. And since then, I've had an amazing time discovering that I can play tennis in a much more zen state than I knew was possible for me. Now, I can simultaneously construct points while moving well and hitting clean shots and like not going crazy trying to hit like insane shots. That sounds kind of dumb saying it out loud, but that's the reality before I was trying to balance those three things and it was like not working for me. Now that I'm beginning to be able to play tennis like this, it's kind of wild that I've played tennis my whole life without being able to do those things. And honestly, tennis has become so much more fun and I am so, so excited to be able to play like this in competitions going forward. In the matches that I recorded for today's video, I hadn't yet made this realization about how anxiety and panic affect my play yet but you can see the beginnings of it starting to peek through in the way that I play. Um, at least you can when I'm not dying of shortness of breath. So we're going to watch one video. I'll come back with some commentary for that one. We'll watch another video 
and I'll be back at the end for a full recap. So I'll see you soon. Enjoy.
Welcome to the intermission. Sadly, my GoPro ran out of juice when I was playing my best tennis. I ended up winning a close second set, I think 6-4 or 7-5, and then losing like 5-10 in the super tiebreaker. I think I could have come away with the win, but I made the mistake of taking a hit from my inhaler right before the tiebreaker, knowing it would make me slightly dizzy 
and disoriented for a few minutes in exchange for improving my breathing capacity turned out to be a bad trade. I think I was down like 2.8 at one point, despite feeling like I had a ton of momentum going into the breaker, but oh well. My opponent, KR, lovely, amazing girl. She is just so friendly. We had a really great match and, and it was still really competitive and I, it was a joy playing with her. It was a joy meeting her and I hope that we get to play again in the future, either on the same team or against each other. Shout out to you, KR. In terms of what it was like playing against KR, she's a really good all-around tennis player, really heavy ball, good pace and big spin, really good placement, really deep placement, and her forehand was really big. She's really good also at getting around the outside of the ball and being able to pull it cross court. I think off of both wings, but especially her forehand. Her forehand's a big weapon. Her serve was really heavy with a good kick, especially wide to the backhand, although it was kind of one note and became predictable. She did it all the time and I was able to get into a groove against it. She also tended to be a little impatient and slightly overambitious on balls during rallies, kind of like myself. She might see a ball that she thinks she can take advantage of and ends up overhitting on it, just trying to do too much with it. it. Reminds me of myself, not everybody's perfect. Playing against KR was probably the best I felt that I'd played in a meaningful match in terms of like my mental game, of being able to play like I do in practice. It was a big win for me. I was really happy with the way I played despite not coming away with a W, you know? When we were playing, I did really well in terms of managing my stamina, at least relative to the rest of this weekend. It was actually the third match that I had played in Scottsdale. So by that time, I had gained some experience in terms of trying to mitigate my breathing issues. And honestly, my main tactic was that drinking cold water, like a sip of cold water every single point, helped bring down the swelling in my upper respiratory tract briefly. And that would help me breathe better for at least the first couple shots in a rally. And that was like huge. That made a big difference. I was able to stay in the match a lot better like that. I also did well maintaining margin on the balls that I was hitting. I wasn't perfect, but I was more willing to choose a deep, like spinny, neutral ball or defensive ball to the center or the backhand in order to try to reset the rally instead of forcing the issue or forcing a play to happen. So this is a really basic tactical skill that I've always known I should be doing in theory, but the lack of management of my anxiety always kept me from doing it successfully. And so becoming aware of the panic that kind of, that comes into my body every time I hit a shot, learning to like mitigate that was huge in like helping me be able to make non-idiotic decisions during matches. Anyways, let's move on to the next match. This is actually the match that I played in the morning before I played KR. So I'm a little bit more raw here. And also I have more trouble breathing. You'll see it when you're watching the video, but I still wanted to show it just to give a taste of like what a slightly more incapacitated Olive looks like. Here comes match number two. This time the GoPro films the whole thing. So there's not gonna be any cuts in the middle of the match. Sorry about that. Um, but here you go, enjoy.
All right, so the notes for my match against Eminem are gonna be brief because my memory of the match is pretty hazy just because of how much effort I was putting in to just breathing and being able to stay in it physically. And honestly, it was just extremely sunny and miserable out there. And there was a ton of glare, especially on the far side of the court. I was just, you know, I wasn't trying to remember the match too much. I was literally just trying to play tennis and, and not keel over and die out there. So things I do remember. Eminem's serve gave me a little bit of trouble. She was effective off of both wings at moving me laterally on the court. There wasn't anything too special about her ground strokes or her, her balls. They were just pretty neutral in terms of spin. She could hit them with good placement, good depth. She's a good tennis player. She was consistent for the most part, unless I gave her like a more challenging ball in terms of like pace, probably the way that I would have liked to play um, if I was, uh, if I had more physical capacity was to vary the velocity of my ball a little bit more, vary the placement in terms of the depth and be able to run her around more. Cause I would say like weak, her biggest weakness is probably her movement. She's just not the quickest athlete. And so if I had been able to stay in points longer, if I had slightly more ability to create pace and spin that day, I think I could have gotten a lot more points just off of staying in points longer and giving her more challenging balls to get to more often. During the match, I definitely wanted to try out different tactics. Like I was saying, switch up the type of ball that I was hitting more, changing the rhythm with off-speed balls and slices. Like I said before, the shorter and deeper placement. But in the end, I was having enough trouble trying to stay in the match physically. You know, I was having trouble mustering the intensity to just survive points. So I'm happy with the outcome. I mean, not, I'm not happy with like losing, but I'm not upset at like my effort or the decisions that I made during the match. I wish I had known about the drinking water thing during this match. I think it could have played a it could have made a difference. Uh, I'm not sure I would have won the match, but it would have been closer if I had had that to help with, to help with my breathing. So, like I said, Eminem had decent shot making ability. She's a good tennis player overall, but given her limitations in terms of movement, I think that if I had been able to breathe a bit better, I would have bet on myself to win that match. Um, I think if we played now, I would definitely choose myself over her. If you made it this far into the video, it seems like you might enjoy my content. If that's the case, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, um, and consider sharing with your friends that might be interested in watching tennis. It really helps me out a lot. Thank you all for your support. I hope to see you soon. Um, that's it. This angle is not great. What if you go like... <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.